OK, I thought I would update you today on some of the observations that I've had with this Pure Drive Energy battery and some of the testing that I've been doing. If you haven't seen my other videos about the Pure Drive battery, it's basically on test with me, not from Pure Drive themselves. I have no association with Pure Drive. It's on test with my installer. That's Christian from Power Different. Specification wise, all I know is that this battery is a 4.8 kilowatt hour lithium phosphate battery. It also has a Victron Multi Plus 3000 inverter inside. So in theory, the maximum we're going to get on charging and discharging is, well, I'm seeing 2.3 on charging as a maximum and about 2.8, maybe 2.9 as an absolute maximum on output. But getting to my observations, this chart is one of the key ones, I guess. It starts by showing the battery state of charge and the dark blue line in the middle of this blue section. That's the average state of charge in the period in question. The blue area is showing the minimum and maximum state of charge of the battery in the time interval for the graph. The time interval on this graph is a day. So what we can see is that in the first week or so of testing, I was discharging the battery right to the bottom level, so below 20%, and that's because there was a fault with this battery. But as time's moved on, I've basically got used to using it and now don't go anywhere near the 20%, so the battery isn't failing. We're basically working with the top section of the battery. It is recharging to 100% every day. Basically, I have enough solar energy to recharge it, even on uh, one of the dullest days. But equally, what we can start to see is the weather is getting better. I'm getting more solar power. So over the test period, the blue area is getting thinner and the state of charge is getting higher on average. We're not discharging the battery as much as I was. It was going down to nearly 60%, now it's only going down to about 80%, if not 75%. This chart is a little less cluttered and only shows battery state of charge, and you can see a little bit more clearly there that I am recharging to 99 or 100% during the day, and it is discharging overnight to, to what? Um, mostly 70% and above. My usage profile so far is basically mostly this battery is getting used in the evening. So as solar energy has disappeared during the day and it gets to, say, six or seven o'clock at night, then the battery is kicking in and taking over, taking up the house load. And then also completely through the night, it's taking the house load as well. So we've got hardly any grid usage at all. But during the day, it's also picking up the excess, the extra amount of power I need that I haven't got enough solar energy for. So on a lot of occasions, I have enough solar energy to, say, power the microwave at 1.7 kilowatts. But if we turn the oven on, another 2.8, that's 3, 4.5 kilowatts in total. And sometimes I don't have that coming through from the solar panels. So the battery picks that up and provides the extra 1 or 2 or 2.5 two kilowatts of extra power to not use the grid. Generally, I'm a very low energy user in the first place. Without solar or a battery, I was probably using on average 10 kilowatt hours a day. But now with 6.3 kilowatt P of solar panels on the roof, I tend to use a lot more energy because I'm using it for more things. So from this consumption graph, you can see that I've got a lot of orange, a lot of solar energy being consumed. But then the blue on top is from the battery, showing a smaller percentage is coming from the battery. In this example, for a day, I only had 0.71 kilowatts at that point in time coming from the battery and only 0.1 kilowatt hours coming from the grid. So I'm not really a typical case of where you can save the most amount of money from having a battery installed because I've already saved a lot of money by having the solar panels in the first place and that's saving most of my grid usage. The battery if I get one, will be to take those last few kilowatt hours and uh, make those last few pieces of savings. So you can't really use my example as a basis as to whether you can save money or how much money you might save, because proportionately I've already invested a lot of money in solar panels and I'm making the greatest savings there. For other people that aren't able to consume the energy during the day and need to consume it overnight, then those people will get better use from a battery than I would because I've already done my cooking, I've already done my washing, I've already charged the car and heated the hot water and used all of that energy during the day. So I have very little energy left to use at night and that's where my savings are reduced. 
Other people have different energy profiles of usage, and hence you can make different levels of savings. Wow, five minutes of preamble. Really sorry about that. Uh, for people that are watching this for the first time, I guess it's necessary. If you're following these videos, you've heard that already. Anyway, to the detail. One of the things I've been looking at is battery temperature, and I've got a graph here that shows what I was looking at when I first started to consider battery temperature. And we can see that uh, it's getting down to 15 degrees overnight, and then as it charges during the day, the temperature rises sharply to between 25 and 30 degrees. And then when it reaches its zenith, it is basically at the end of the battery's use. It's finished charging and it's finished being actively used during the day. So sometime between lunchtime and tea time, that's roughly when the battery starts to cool down. The sharpness of the graph as it cooled down was what was first of interest to me because I started to think, well, why is it cooling down so quickly? It can't be well insulated. To clarify, temperatures outside were between 0 degrees and 6 degrees overnight and during the day probably more 10 to 12 degrees maximum. And the battery is located in my garage. So I decided to add a rudimentary level of insulation to the battery. So it was basically two compacted cardboard boxes either end with some carpet laying across the top of the battery and then a sheet over the top of that. There are some air vents at the back of the battery case and those were not obstructed in any way. I made sure of that. The difference was visible straight away on the first day after doing it. What you can see is that the temperature still rose, but it stayed at the top peak level of temperature for a little bit longer. And the steps down took longer as well. So it obviously was retaining some heat. So the bottom minimum temperature was higher than 15 and basically it started to creep up as the weather improved too. Looking at battery temperature over the longer period, what we can basically see is that weather has been improving and the temperature has been rising. But equally, what I'm able to do with this insulation is I'm keeping the temperature closer to the optimum level, which is 25, 26 degrees. I'm guessing that's optimum because that's the temperature at which they quote maximum power for charging and output. And as we're getting more sunny days, what's basically happening is that I'm using the battery less. So it's charging less in the mornings, which means it's generating less heat. So it's not getting to that maximum temperature. But then because of the insulation and the warmer day as well, the temperature is not declining as much. So it's keeping in that mid range much, much better. So in my opinion, if this pure drive battery is supposed to be installed in a garage environment, then it should have a winter cover, a cover that you place over the top of it, but then can remove in the summer when it's not necessary. Temperature wise, these batteries might be better suited to be placed indoors, especially if you look at the marketing material like this, it definitely shows that uh, you should have them in your lounge. But have a listen to the noise that this battery actually makes. It's not deafening by any means, but it would definitely be annoying to me. Okay, moving on to another issue I've been looking at, which is consumption. I've been trying to get as close to zero grid usage as possible. So when I see a red spike of grid usage, I need to try and understand what it is and how it's been caused to see whether I can stop it from happening again, to try and get as close as possible to zero. So this chart on the 6th of April has got three nice spikes that I should be able to investigate and try and understand what went on because I wasn't really certain that I had used any appliance in the house that had demanded more than the amount of solar that I had coming in plus the power capability of the battery. One of the things to consider at this stage is we don't know which graphs and which systems are the most accurate and we don't know whether what I'm seeing here is real. Did I really use any grid usage in those spikes? So looking at the same day from the battery point of view in one of the advanced uh, charts, I can see the grid usage and the spikes aren't there. The spikes in the morning and lunchtime aren't visible at all on this graph. So the battery doesn't think that there was any grid usage in that time period. But there was some grid usage at 1541 here, 185 watts, and that sort of does tie up quite close to where the third spike was on the solar edge chart. 
Curiously though, if I actually download the raw data from the Victron VRM application, I can see that there are two time slots that do tie up. So we've got the 10 o'clock one, and we've got the something past 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Both of those are showing up as 0.1 kilowatt hours consumed from the grid. Now those two do tie up to the Solar Edge graph, and also the 0.2 kilowatt hours does tie up to the graph as well. So it looks to me like some of those red spikes visible on the solar edge chart here, those are valid, but not all of them. And then we have another example in this chart where we're just about reaching 100% state of charge, and at exactly the same time we seem to have a spike drawing some grid power. Another observation, which I haven't actually figured out fully as yet, is that it is quite common to have these spikes at the beginning and the end and in the middle of the solar day. It does seem rather common that it's around when the solar starts to get going or when it actually finishes and also when it's at its peak. What I'm aiming for, of course, are days like this where we have a fantastic amount of solar energy and we don't see any red spikes whatsoever. On this day, just 0 0.046 of a kilowatt hour imported from the grid. The one thing I have got sorted is the grid energy used overnight. So this chart is showing the grid energy used from midnight till about 6 in the morning. It's 8 watt hours. So that's 0 0.008 of a kilowatt hour for about 6 hours of usage covering the house load. And as mentioned in one of my previous videos, this has been achieved by changing the grid point setting. So basically setting the inverter to try and export energy. Uh, I set it to minus 30, so that's trying to put out 30 watts continuously. It hasn't completely stopped the use of grid energy, but it's almost there. It's close enough. I don't think we're ever going to get to an actual zero, except over a very small period of time. My lowest grid use for an entire day is currently at less than 0.1 of a kilowatt hour. So yes, it's still a number and it's still using the grid, but it's pretty, pretty close to zero. And no, the battery hasn't been fixed yet and I haven't moved the position of where it's connected into my AC system either. So we've still got some faults to uh, get around and as a result, the consumption numbers in some of these graphs aren't actually correct. Okay, that's all I want to share with you today. Uh, if I see any other observations or any good test things, I'll um, certainly share them with you. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope there was something useful in there. And if you're thinking of adding a battery to your configuration, yeah, it, this has convinced me. Having one on test, on loan, is definitely convinced me I want one at some point in time. I don't care if it cost justifies or not. I do like not using hardly any grid energy at all, and that's what I'd like to do. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you again soon. Bye-bye.